And then what happened to you? Um, I don't remember from what I'm told. <laughs> um, I started throwing up and they didn't know what to do with me, so they put me in the bathroom. So how long were you in that bathroom? About two hours, and then they came back to check on me and I wasn't breathing. Then they attempted to come and get you out of the bathroom, had to carry you, because they were going to take you to the hospital, but every five or ten steps they had to stop and do CPR on you. They took you to the hospital. How long were you in a coma? Um, I was only, well, I shouldn't say only. <laughs> I was comatose for about two hours on respirators, and when they dropped me off... Oh, please wait. Do this. Tell, so I gotta take a break, but I want you to explain this. You were in the hospital, alcohol, didn't know what happened. When you woke up in the hospital, you had tubes in your mouth. Tell people what it's like to wake up, not know that you were even there. Explain it's, this. There's nothing more horrifying than waking up and not knowing where you are, why you're there, or who, or who you are. And you didn't even know who you were. How long did it take to remember your name? I don't know how long it took me to remember my name. It took me six hours to remember my phone number and write on a clipboard. And then they called your mom. You know, when my mom came to look for me, I was listed under Jane Doe, because they didn't tell the hospital who I was. Let me take a break. When we come back, we'll try to figure out why would people even do this. Take a break. We'll be back right after this. Now I use it to make a difference. I go. And I speak at schools because, unlike their children, I was lucky. And if I don't do something with it, there's something wrong with me. Uh, I, you know what? <laughs> I was so clear that Utah made a good choice in you. When I finally found Nicole up at the hospital, uh, she was listed under Jane Doe because no one knew who she was. I walked in that room, and it was absolutely a sight I will never forget the rest of my life. Nicole Hansen, she loves to sing, but once ecstasy entered her life, she stopped all that. Weekend after weekend, Hansen put aside music and dreams for a lifestyle that almost ended her life. What happened is it started controlling my life, and I started basing my life on the next party I was going to go to. And the party drug ecstasy was eating her alive and introducing this 18-year-old girl to the underbelly of Salt Lake City. You hear more about cocaine, and you hear more about, you know, mushrooms or GHB or Special K or whatever, and so those things start not to seem so bad. On December 2nd, 2000, a drug overdose landed Nicole in the hospital. I remember waking up and having my arms and my legs strapped down, and I started choking on all the tubes that were in my throat. But today, the music is back. Nicole went on to win Miss Teen Utah. She now tells school kids and their parents her story. Parents have this image of what a drug user is, you know, someone in a dark alley with a needle and heroin and everything like that, and it's not like that anymore. Barry Hansen knows that and is returning the music to his family one court at a time. And she's now pursuing her goals and dreams that I always thought she was capable of. It's, it's almost been three years, and I still have days that, you know, I don't know how I'm going to get through it, but I do. Advice for teenagers who might be thinking about using drugs, or using drugs for that matter? Um, I mean, the biggest reason that I do this is so, so that they see, you know, that I, that I did come out of it, and I know what it feels like to be alone, and I know what it feels like, you know, to, like, cry yourself to sleep at night because you don't know how you feel anymore. You don't know what it is to feel. But, you know, I can promise you that adding that to, the, to your life only makes it more difficult. And, you know, if you really want to quit, if, you, if it's really in your heart that you don't want to do it anymore, just wake up every morning and say, all right, today, today I'm not going to do drugs. And that's conceivable. A lifetime seems impossible, but a day at a time, it's not so bad. Our thanks to Nicole for sharing her story and her journey out of addiction. young ladies that I've worked with in the D.A.R.E. program. She's uh, always willing to come to visit with kids and to uh, answer any questions and to participate in the D.A.R.E. graduations. And uh, the kids think she's wonderful. And I think she's a great supporter of D.A.R.E. She's all right. Thanks, Mike. Anytime.
I'm a slave to this addiction I'm alone and so afraid In this world of contradiction I've got no refuge from the pain In a sea of opportunity I'm drowning deeper still There's no one here to save me I lose my life against my will Someone save me Show me what it's like to live Someone save me Because I've got so much to give I know there's so much more to this Than what I have become Someone save me, show me what it's like to love I'm a slave to this addiction I take a pill to numb the pain So many misconceptions Because I know I'm not okay My home is my castle I'm in the dungeon Little girl drowning in a world of resentment. 